You're listening to the Air Hug Community Podcast. Hello and welcome. My name is Judy Arizoza and I am the host of the Air Hug Community Podcast. And if you're new here, let me just tell you what we're all about. We are a community that believes supporting each other can be wonderful and it helps improve the lives of others as well as our life. We believe in living well and that includes physical fitness, eating well, but also mental fitness. We believe that movement should be fun and that eating to live better should also be fun and delicious. We have conversations and stories from guests and myself that are often inspired by the thousands of conversations I've had one-on-one with working with women over the last dozen years, but also with conversations with several of my besties with our one-on-one walks that we love to take together. So have a listen, and I'm really glad you're here. Thank you so much for joining in. Hey, hello, and welcome back. All right, today we are going to get down to the nitty gritty and talk about fat loss. But first of all, let's point something out, okay? Spot reduction is a myth. I think you probably know that. You've probably heard it over and over again, but I just want to make sure that you cannot spot reduce your stomach. You cannot spot reduce your triceps. You cannot spot reduce your love handles or anything else. All right, so let's get down to the nitty gritty and talk about strategies for fat loss. And I'm going to talk about five important strategies for fat loss today. So are you ready? Let's get right to it, okay? Number one is probably the most obvious, but let's not forget the obvious, right? We need to eat in a deficit. In order to lean out our body, we basically have to have our body use up energy stores that are already there. Basically, when we want to lose fat, what we want to lose is our energy stores, which is fat tissue. Just keep that in mind, but we don't want to lose anything else, period. So here's a good way to start thinking about it. For two weeks, track your intake of food carefully. And if it means weighing and measuring, then weigh and measure, but don't change anything. Eat like you normally eat. Do not change anything. And if at the end of two weeks you're losing weight, you're kind of in a deficit. If you're the same, then we've found your maintenance. If you've gained weight over those two weeks, well, then we know we're eating in a surplus. So that's the beginning. All right. Number two, we need to spare nitrogen excuse me, nitrogen. Mm -hmm. So look, let's think about it this way. A body will make up a calorie deficit from its own tissue. And that means it could be from fat stores, but could also be from non-fat stores like tissue that we need. And tissue that we need requires protein to be maintained. And so what we want to do is maintain our protein intake because that's where we get our nitrogen from, right? We basically want to maintain our amino acid pool is what we're really talking about. So I think what I would say is spare amino acids more than sparing nitrogen, if you want to think of it that way. So remember, when you're eating in a deficit, you're going to be, your body's going to use its own tissue to gobble up energy just to maintain itself. So you do not want to eat your own important tissues that you need for survival. You want to eat and feast on basically excess fat tissue. And of course, we always still want some fat, but don't worry about it. It would be extremely hard for us to get lean enough to have like enough, not enough fat to draw from. So I wouldn't worry about that. All right. But here's the thing. Let's get back to how much protein is adequate. So a great rule of thumb during fat loss is to go with one gram of protein per pound of body weight. However, that can be hard for some people, especially let's say you weigh 200 pounds and your healthy weight is 130 pounds. You're not going to want to eat 200 grams of protein per day. 
right? And that's not really what you need. What you need is enough protein for your ideal body weight. And I made this mistake early on in my coaching career with those exact parameters. And I thought my client was going to kill me because she could not possibly have eaten that much protein in a day. So lesson learned, right? That was a dozen years ago. But a great rule of thumb is to Eat enough protein, one gram per pound of body weight of your ideal body weight. And that will basically get you where you actually have enough amino acids in your amino acid stores to maintain your vital tissues, right? Especially muscle. You want to maintain muscle, all right, because if you're losing muscle, you're actually going to be um, burning less calories at rest and it's going to be even harder. But not only that, it's going to make you weaker and you're going to be at risk for things. And you also need amino acids for things like we talked about in the macro episode for things like neurotransmitters and mood and behavior. So we got a protein is important. You're going to hear that as a recurring theme over and over and over again. Okay. All right. Here's number three. Make your body anabolic by exercise. What do I mean by anabolic? Well, it sounds disgusting, but it's basically eating off of its own storage. Okay, so we do that. The best way to do this with exercise is through weight training. All right. The stimulus weight training is the response that the body will maintain muscle mass while still gobbling up fat, all right? Because you're building on muscle and you're repairing muscle, especially if you've got the right amount of protein eating and you're eating in a deficit. That's a great combo, all right? So um, weight training, a little bit on the heavier side, as much as you can tolerate it, is great. And you can also mix in something called metabolic conditioning where you are lifting weights, maybe not at maximal heaviness, but at least moderate to moderately heavy, and you're lifting them in a way that you're sequencing them. So you're working one body part, resting a very short time, working another body part, resting a short time, and then maybe working a third body part, resting a short time. You can vary the number of body parts worked in the sequence anywhere from, or, or body movements from two to five. So... I know that sounds confusing, but it really isn't. And by doing that, you're keeping your heart rate up the whole time. So cardiovascularly, it's great. You're burning a lot of calories. And once again, you're sparing very important muscle. All right. The fourth strategy is to think about your carbs and fat. So once you know your protein count, once you know your protein count, you can play around a little bit with the carbs and fat. And that's why now you see a lot of Diets coming out where people are more pro-fat or for more pro-carb. Here's the thing. It's not what's popular. It's not what's research. It's what works for you. And basically, you have to listen to your body. Try out a few different strategies. You know, try one that you think you like and then go from there. Again, it's important to try it for two weeks. Be consistent. Write it down. Weigh and measure your food and then see how it worked. If it didn't work, Try something a little bit different. There's definitely a, definitely a lot of finding our baseline, finding what works, tweaking it, and then trying again. All right? Okay. Now, number five is, are you confused? If you're confused, get guidance and be, have someone to become accountable to. So the best way to do this is to find someone who's experienced with your age and stage of life. So I always say this, if you're a 50-year-old woman, there is no way in Hades that a 26-year-old male trainer is going to have any empathy for what you're going through and very little experience at that. So I say, if you're you know, a 35-year-old guy, then find a trainer who specializes in guys, right? If you're a 50-year-old woman, then find someone who specializes in midlife. And by the way, I think you already know this, but just in case you're new here, that is my niche in my training business. I work exclusively with midlife women who aim to be healthy and to learn the habits both nutritionally and physically and mentally to maintain a healthy body existence. And 
Just as an aside, the mental aspect of this is every bit as important as the first five things I mentioned. So if we want to review the first five things I mentioned, the five that we're covering today, we are talking about number one, eating in a deficit. Number two, sparing amino acids, which means taking in enough protein to maintain vital tissues. Number three is making your body anabolic through exercise. So we want to be in an energy deficit by exercise. Number four is be willing to be flexible with the carbs and fat to figure out what gets you the best formula. Because again, uh, everyone is different and we need to figure it out. Number five is if you're confused and nothing seems to work for you, get guidance and accountability with an experienced coach who specializes in your age and stage of life. All right, listen, that's it for today. If you're confused and you want some help, I will put my information in the show notes. I'll be happy to help you. If you need some help in the motivation category, and (laughs) from time to time, we all do, I have you covered, okay? You can grab my free Manifesting Motivation Masterclass, and it's yours to keep just for finding out about it, and I'm very happy to share it with you. I will put a link to it in the show notes. Thank you very much for checking in and listening today on the Air Hug Community Podcast. You know it always means a lot to me to know that you are there listening. And would you please do me a favor? Please leave a review on Apple and subscribe because Apple just loves it when they see a lot of reviews. When they see a lot of reviews, it give, it kind of puts them on alert and they will actually make our podcast more able to find for people who are looking for these kinds of things. So I hope you enjoyed this. I welcome your comments. Feel free to drop me a note and I will see you next Tuesday and every Tuesday here on the Air Hug Community Podcast. Ta-ta for now.